Meditation. Well, you may say, oh, we're not supposed to deal in that, you know. That's what the devil's people do. Well, I'm here to tell you, uh, that's the devil has ripped off the church. And I require, if come get into agreement with me, we require the devil pay back with spoil in Jesus' name. He has ripped off the church for too long in the areas of imagination and meditation. They were given to us by God to help to bring change into the earth. And we take them back now with spoil in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No longer will he hijack meditation and imagination. We are made in our Father's image. And we're made to see things by the Spirit. And ima- you should imagine yourself laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. Praise the Lord. You should imagine and see yourself speaking to a crowd of people and leading them to Jesus. <laughs> and then believe to speak it. And then see it come to pass. Hallelujah. So I want to talk about this because it will help you fulfill your kingdom destiny. And you want to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You want to begin to walk, act, talk, live like Jesus. Well, you know, the easiest way to accomplish that is to be who God called you to be. And that means you're going to have to meditate on the Word of God. And I'm going to show you from the Scriptures how powerful this is. It will cause you to speak right. And then once you start, you believe it and speak it, then the change takes place. Hallelujah. So let's start out because it will enable you to be all that God has called you to be and to prosper the way God wants you to prosper. Therefore, have the influence over those in the world the way that God wants you to have influence. We are supposed to be in charge of things in every discipline that there is so that men could live peaceful quiet, godly lives, and that's their best chance to receive the uh, plan of salvation. Hallelujah. And so all this chaos and all this violence and stuff, it is not of God sent from the pits of hell. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. We will not allow it, devil. We command you to stop in Jesus' name. And I declare the days of mask wearing are over in the name of Jesus. Oh, so things, the devil has had things upside down, but God's saying, I'm turning them right side up. Hallelujah. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, first we got, you know, to solve a problem, first you got to know that there is a problem, amen, and what it is, and then you, you do whatever it takes to, to solve it. That's why I love uh, President Trump so much. Joe Biden has been saying this, the Democrats have been saying, we got to do this, we got to do that. This is wrong, this is wrong, vote for me. And for 47 years, they hadn't fixed a thing. All they've done is make it worse by putting more and more government regulations and bureaucracy in it. Where Trump sees a problem, he then implements a solution to it, hallelujah. And that's supposed to be what God's people do. We are problem solvers. You have in you the kingdom of God. You have what everybody needs out there walking around lost and undone in their sin. You have what they need. Hallelujah. So you want to know how to reach them, how to prosper, to have the influence that you have, how to be transformed, to be more like Jesus. Well, we're going to talk about it. First, we got to say, okay, here's the problem. Then we're going to deal with it. Ecclesiastes 10, 5 through 7. There is an evil I have seen under the sun. Something's wrong. What is wrong? The sort of error that arises from a ruler when ungodly are in charge. Fools are put in many high positions. Have you noticed that? Have you heard Nancy Pelosi? You got to pass the bill to find out what's in the bill. I don't think you can get any more foolish than that. While the rich occupy the low ones. Aren't we rich in the Lord? And even in the material realm, we should be. Through his poverty, we've been made rich. 
Something's wrong. Here's some more wrong. I've seen slaves on horseback. Those that are slaves to the devil that are following the wrong thing. They're on the horseback while princes, the people of God, go on foot like slaves. Something is wrong. Amen? Well, we're going to believe God, and he's going to reverse that in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And we're going to be in charge of things. Yes. Praise the Lord. What we just read describes many people in the body of Christ. Yes. Instead of being the lender and not the borrower, many Christians believe they have to be in debt. Instead of being the head and therefore dictating their existence through dominion and authority, the vast majority of Christians have lived their lives as the tail. This is not acceptable to God. And he is going to help you if you will believe him for it. If you don't want it, you're not going to get it because he has given you a free will. But if you want it and you can see it, you can have it, and I'm going to help you Put yourself in a position and have the revelation so you can see it. This very day. Not in the sweet by and by, but today. Hallelujah. Because when you are the tail, you get wagged. We're supposed to be doing the wagging. Amen. Hallelujah. When you're getting wagged, that means situations and circumstances are controlling you rather than being in your control. You're under the circumstances. You should be over the circumstances by believing in your heart and speaking the Word of God. You know, many people have heard the Word of God, yet in general, most of these same people are still at the same place spiritually that they were 5, 10, 20, or even 30 years ago when they got born again. What's the problem? Well, in most cases, it's a failure to meditate on the word that they heard. Amen. Let's see what uh, Webster's, let's put the Webster's definition of meditation. Close or continued thought, the turning uh, or revolving of a subject in the mind, serious contemplation to resolve in the mind, imagine or premeditate. Meditating on God's Word is simply turning the Word of God over into in your heart until it produces revelation or spiritual sight. This is what we go for because this is what will produce change in the natural. Praise the Lord. Uh, it will build faith which allows you to see with your spiritual eyes instead of your natural eyes. Instead of looking at the problem, you could keep looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. You'll look at what you're going to rather than what you're going through, and you'll come out on the other side with promotion, stronger than ever, more influence than ever, more confidence to believe and speak the Word of God with an expectation to see things changing. And um, it will build your faith and you'll see with the eyes of your spirit and the realm of the spirit. Praise the Lord. So let's look at Hebrews 11.1 1 in the Amplified. Praise the name of the Lord. And then you can just be like an ordinary guy and then start seeing things in the spirit like I did. I was just I didn't know doodly, but I got my nose in the Word of God, asked God to help me, and I kept doing it and kept doing it and wasn't going to quit and meditated on the Word of God, got, got eyes to be able to see into the spirit realm, and now when things are happening, and you know, you watch the news, I know exactly what the devil is doing and how what God's people are supposed to do to get the victory. It says, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof or the evidence of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. 
faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Praise the Lord. It's the evidence of things not seen. And that evidence means something is real. You know, fingerprints are used as evidence. When you see a fingerprint, it is evident. That means a real finger touched that. A person was there. And so faith is the evidence to believe the reality of what God's Word is saying. Hallelujah. And meditation also builds inner strength to believe that you have the ability to hold on to what you believe. So many times... People will hear the word of God, they'll hold on, and the first sign of any kind of, because the devil's going to come to test that. He's going to come to say, did God really say? And if you yield to that, you'll lose that which God had given you. So look at Genesis 24, 63. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at evening time. Hmm. He heard the word of the Lord. He went out to meditate, and then what happens when you meditate? Here's a picture of it. He lifted up his eyes. He got his eyes off the natural, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And the camels always represent prosperity. They're bringing the goods. They're carrying everything. And he meditated on the word of God. And instead of looking at lack, he saw the camels coming because he saw into the spirit realm. And then he began to speak it. And then there was the prosperity. Glory to God. This is the way that it works. Without the meditation, he's still been looking at lack. So we meditate And therefore, then we get, now we have to put the Word of God in. We got to read it. We got to hear it. But then once we have it, we got to meditate on it. And you can do that while you're driving or wherever that you are, praise the Lord. And then that will bring you spiritual sight. He said, lift up your eyes, and then you'll see what's going to happen in the natural. And then that will help you become the head and not the tail because you'll know what the devil is going to do or what's going to happen in advance. God could tell you what stock is going up and what stock is going down, praise the Lord. And so Isaac's meditation was probably a custom handed down to him from his father, Abraham. And so we should do the same as Abraham is our father. Amen. It should be our family tradition, not like the Hank Williams family. Why do you, why do you drink? Why do you roll smoke? It's a family tradition. No, we have the family tradition of meditating on the Word of God, then seeing into the spiritual realm, seeing the spiritual truth, speaking it and walking in it, and then enjoying it. Hallelujah. And being the head and not the tail, and have, being a thermostat rather than a thermometer. The thermometer just reflects that around them. Too many Christians are thermometers. We need to be the thermostats that set the atmosphere and the atmosphere has to change because the Word of God will not. We are Abraham's heirs and seed according to the promise through Jesus Christ. So it says, he lifted up his eyes. The same expression used by Jesus describing the unseen harvest in John chapter 4. Let's look at John 4, 35. Say ye not, there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. So many Christians walking around, and God's put the provision It's there for them just to lay hold of and bring it into the natural. But you're going to have to lift up your eyes. How do you do that? You meditate on the promises of God. Hallelujah. It's a family tradition. Hallelujah. The same words over. Okay. So let's look at Genesis 22, 12 through 14. The same words were used to describe Abraham, who is the one that taught Isaac. In Genesis 22, 13. Did you know that? Now, 22, 12 through 14. He said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. 
for now I know that thou fearest God. This is the angel talking to Abraham. Seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. The Lord speaking. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, meditated on what he was just told. The word from God he just got. And looked. He just didn't see in the natural anymore. Behold, behind him. He knew it where it was behind him. He didn't even see it with his natural eyes. He looked up, saw the ram. Oh, must be behind me. Turned around, behold him, a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh which means the God who sees ahead and makes provision. You don't have to worry about provision. God sees your whole life because he uh, inhabits eternity. He doesn't make you do things, but he knows what your decision is because he's not limited to time or space. And just like Elijah, his brook dried up. But God said, go to Zarephath, Zarephath, for I have command. He already has commanded the provision. I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee there. If you just locked, lost your job, know this. God has already commanded the provision, and it is waiting on you to lift up your eyes and speak it and receive it. Hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh. The God who sees ahead and makes provision. And it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Glory to God. God knows the future. It'd be good to be able to see what he sees. Amen. Well, you're going to have to meditate on the word of God. Hallelujah. The same phrase was used to describe what was shown to Jacob in a dream which led him to possess everything his deceiving father-in-law Laban had ripped him off of. Talk about justice is coming. God's fixing to flip the ship, as Dr. Tim likes to say, and he can make things right. Hallelujah. But you're going to have to meditate on the Word of God, and it will cause you to possess things that rightfully belong, legally belong to you that the devil has withheld. If you don't do it, it's just going to remain tied up like that donkey. Jesus, it was already prophesied that was available for him to come in on Palm Sunday. And, uh, and so your inheritance can just stay tied up. But he knew what he called for it. So it's time for you and I to call for our inheritance so it won't be tied up in heaven anymore and to be loosed down here for us. He said, loose him and bring him to me. And that's what we need to be declaring. Hallelujah. Genesis 31, 9 through 10. Thus God had taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that he lifted up his eyes. He meditated on the word of God. Therefore, to see in the spirit realm and began, then declared what God had already shown, this is what I want. The only thing keeping it in the spirit is your mouth or the lack thereof. And then when you speak it, after you've seen it to the spirit, you speak it, it will manifest that I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon, you know what that means, the cattle were ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. And then he got all of those. And Laban was going, he was like Ralph Cramden, you know, hobbit, hobbit, hobbit over here. What is happening here? Praise God. So start a new family tradition. And does anybody remember Ralph Cramden? I just, I'm so old. Oh, my goodness. Uh, start a new family tradition in your family, in your household, to be like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and meditate on the Word of God, and lift up your eyes, see what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, and then speak it. Why not make it your family tradition? Because if you can see it, 
you can have it. He told Abraham, you could have all that that you see up there. So if you could see it, you can have it. Meditation feeds the imagination. Don't let the devil rip you off of imagination. It's our part in allowing the Holy Spirit of God to give us a picture of our success and the truth of God's Word. You got to see yourself succeeding. Most Christians see themselves failing and then talk themselves into it. We have to see ourselves succeeding and talk ourselves into that. Hallelujah. We need a picture of it. The Word of God, the, it creates word pictures. In fact, even the Hebrew letters, they're word pictures. This is how God wants his people to receive from him. So it's very, very important because when you see your success through the truth of God's word, you will then see and believe the promises before they are manifested, but that is what causes them to manifest. It's not up to God. It's up to you. He's already given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. Reserve everything that you'll ever need or want reserved in heaven for you and they move from the spirit realm into the natural realm when you see them you believe the promise you speak it and they move from the unseen spiritual realm down into this natural three-dimensional world in which we live and that will enable people to wonder what manner of man is this hallelujah and it's a whole lot easier to win people to Jesus when they see miracles in your life and they see that you're not afraid even when the circumstances would dictate if that was them they'd be afraid now this thing works as does all kingdom principles on the principles of seed time and harvest when you meditate on the word you are actually sowing good seed into your mind which will then grow into your imagination, really into your soul, which imagination is part of, and it will grow. Meditation is what enabled Joshua and the nation of Israel to take possession of their inheritance, and it is what will enable you to take possession of your inheritance, the promised land that, by the way, was full of giants. Well, your inheritance and, and receiving them and walking in it, there's going to be some giants there, but God has already given all that to you. And the giants, when you compare them to God, they're small. If you compare them to you, they're big. So don't do that. Compare them to God. God said it's yours. Imagine yourself with the victory and those giants will fall. Hallelujah. So it will enable you to take possession of your inheritance. That's what Joshua did to get the inheritance, the promised land, and that's what it is for you. In fact, not only does it work, it's the only thing that works. You can't get it any other way. Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Then that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, after you've got the word and you've meditate on it, then you'll see it with the eyes of your spirit. Then God shall make that, no, wait. It says thou. Thou means you, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not up to God. He's done everything for you. Reserved it in heaven. Put it all there. Made you in a, in a blood covenant. And everything that is his is yours. Giving you a dominion. Giving you the authority. The name of Jesus. Holy Ghost. Resurrection. Power. All that's left for you is to read the word of God. Meditate on it. Believe it. And then you then make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Why? Because you will see yourself as you meditate. You'll get a picture of it and then you'll believe it 
speak it, and then you'll walk in it, and you'll have good success. That is the way of God and the way of God's people. And any other way is not going to work. You'll just wear yourself out. I got three jobs. Well, I don't recommend that. Get a good job. Praise God. Believe God for it. Whatever, but then let God do the heavy lifting for you. Hallelujah. The curse is over. Jesus redeemed us from the curse. We don't have to do it by, you know, the heavy burdens and the sweat of your brow. The blood flowed from the crown of thorns to give us victory over uh, tribulation. Hallelujah. It says, only then, really if translated properly, will you'll make your way successful. Meditation is a God-given process that, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> It causes a permanent change in your thinking. That's how you're transformed by the renewing of your mind. This will cause your thinking to change when you meditate on the Word of God. Lord, what are you saying? And you say it over and over in, in your mind. Mumble it, whatever, driving. I don't like the driver to look over and like, mm. <laughs> so I, I kind of keep it low. But I'm speaking it over, and I'm thinking, Holy Ghost, show me. Show me something I don't already know, and uh, just keep doing that. And I end up at my destination, and sometimes it's like, how did I get here? You know? <laughs> but it works, hallelujah. <clears throat> Meditation is the word, trans on the word transforms your thinking from ungodly thoughts and lies program into the mind by the world system, the demon-controlled world system. That's how you get rid of it. And it'll transform you to, transform you to conform your thinking to God's thoughts instead of man's thoughts. Hallelujah. Remember, when the 12 spies returned from the promised land, what, what happened there? They, the numbers... 1232, I believe, it, they said, it says, they brought up an evil report. Now, let's see what, uh, what, what's an evil report? Anything that doesn't line up with the Word of God. Numbers 14, 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. They looked at the natural they saw with their natural eyes and all full of fear, they wept and said, I'll never, we'll never get what our inheritance was. This is not what God wants for his people. He wouldn't have given you the inheritance if he didn't want you to have it. And he wouldn't have given it to you now if he didn't want you to walk in it now. Praise the Lord. They meditated and they used their imagination. Hmm. Why would we let the devil use that against us and we don't use it the way God had originally intended? This is what the devil does. He, take, he doesn't have an original idea. He takes something beautiful that God created and he'll twist it. And so what they did, they meditated and therefore they visualized, but they visualized the worst. They meditated on the giants rather than the promises of God that said, I've already given it to you. And... Uh, and they did that. They imagined the words, and they never even physically saw one giant. Just the mere word of someone saying there was a giant out there. This is what the devil is doing now with COVID-19. Never mind that 99% of the people that get it survive. And that doesn't even count the 50 times more than that people that got it and didn't even know they had it and survived. So it's really more likely 99.9999999 that survived from it. And so what's there to be afraid of? Besides that, we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Hallelujah. We have the healing power of God. We should open everything up and let people decide for themselves. They don't want to go to the ball game or they don't want to, oh, I'm afraid to go to church. Well, you can't make them go to church. If it's a church that made people go to church, you don't want to go to that church anyway. <laughs> so just let them decide. They want to wear a mask, let them wear it. But don't require anybody. Don't re it's, 
They want to go by science, but I'll tell you a little secret. They don't go by science. Science would say it's not even as bad as the flu. So going about your business, you don't shut down and destroy people's lives for that and think it's a good thing when you destroy somebody's dream Oh, from the organization Black Lives Matter, but to them, black lives don't matter. They're killing people, most of them black. They're destroying businesses, most of them black entrepreneurs that have worked hard and built a dream. They're destroying neighborhoods, virtually all of them, a heavy black, black population. Uh, they're, they're killing black babies by the millions at Planned Parenthood. They don't uh, protest outside of that. They don't care about the black on black crime or the crime in the black neighborhoods. Uh, they don't care. Black lives, in fact, nobody lives matter. They hate people and therefore hate themselves because they hate God. And since people are made in the image of God, they hate people and they hate themselves. They want to go to hell and bring people with them just like we want to go to heaven and bring people with us. And we want to see them live and be blessed and they want to see them die and be cursed. And why are we standing up to that? We need to pray and declare and decree that those governors and mayors and city councils who let them get away with that be removed from office immediately in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, no extra charge for that. So instead of meditating on the two spies that brought the good report, the report of the Lord, they chose, it was a choice, and they chose to meditate on the evil report, the bad news, and just like a seed sown in soil, it came to harvest. And they received exactly what they believed and spoke, dying without ever reaching the promised land and not reaching their destiny. But I decree in the name of Jesus, that will not be you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. But you shall reach your God-given destiny in Jesus' name. You'll hear the word. Read the Word. Meditate on the Word. See the Word in a Word picture. See yourself success. See yourself walking in the promises of God. Speak it. Believe it. And it shall come to pass and thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Once you start meditating on something out of the Word of God, it begins to affect your imagination. Did you know that? And it begins to affect how you see things. Uh, you begin to see yourself and your situation the way that God sees them instead of what the, how the world and the natural would tell you how to see them. And then if you see the promises of God, <clears throat> believe it and act on it in faith, your success is guaranteed by Joshua 1.8. So you might ask, okay, how do I see something that doesn't exist in the natural? You've come to the right place this morning. Hallelujah. Here's the hidden treasure that most of the body of Christ does not yet know. Next um, slide. The will of God is already in existence in the eternal invisible realm. All that you need, it already exists. And there's evidence of it. And you bring it into the natural by faith. Just like the donkey Jesus rode into Jerusalem, you have to call for it. Let's look at Genesis 13, 14 through 15. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him. Here we go again. Lift up now thine eyes. And look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. Look all around, he said. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. He was saying to Abram, if you can see it, you can have it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Let's look at Joshua 6, 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, look, meditate on what I promised, and then begin to see it in the spirit realm. See, I have given into thy hand Jericho. See Jericho. If you can see it, you can have it. And the king thereof, I've given you the city. I've all the inhabitants, the king, all the mighty men of valor. Hallelujah. I have given it to you. You can have it if you can see it. And the way to see it is to meditate on what the word is until you get a picture of it. And then your imagination starts to work for you instead of against you. And you start having dominion over your imagination and you start imagining good things and success instead of bad things and failure. No extra charge for that. Hallelujah. Jericho was a city, if you don't know, that in the natural was impossible to penetrate. But with God, you have to see it before he can deliver it to you or before you can physically have it manifested. Job 3, 25 through 26. By the way, not ne next Sunday is Dr. Booker. And then the next two Sundays after that, it's going to be a two-part on the book of Job. Make sure you don't miss it because if you will, will receive it, it will cause you to love God more than you've ever loved him before. And you say, I, I love him so much. Well, you'll love him more. Trust me, th it will happen. And he said this. He had some problems with his thinking. He said, for the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. That's what he meditated on, what he feared. And that which I was afraid of has come to me. He meditated on what could happen bad. And that's what he meditated. He says, I was not in safety, neither had I rest. So he worried about it. Oh, this is going to happen. And here's the key. Neither was I quiet. He then spoke what he feared, and it came to pass. And, but use that principle for good. Use it for your blessing, your prosperity, to have opportunity to, for the glory of God and believe the promises of God, the good things of God that he has for you, and then speak that, and it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. Job 1, 9 through 10. Then Satan answered the Lord. We'll go through, the, well, we can't really go through the whole book, but we're going to go through quite a bit of it. Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? What was in context here? Job was saying, uh, I can't touch him. Everything he has is blessed. Everything is multiplied. His family, you got this hedge of protection. I can't touch him. Well, God automatically puts a hedge of protection around you. The devil can't get through or he wouldn't have complained. If God's the one that put it there, he's not going to break it down. The only people, person who could break down the hedge of protection is you and your mouth. So learn to meditate on the Word of God and speak that and keep your hedge of protection. And it is actually possible to walk through this world uh, being untouched doesn't mean circumstances aren't going to look all ominous and all that but you keep looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of your face Satan could see the hedge of protection protecting Job but Job couldn't see it oh it's an invisible hedge he couldn't see it therefore he couldn't have it had he meditated on the promises of God instead of, oh, what might go wrong, he, or lift his eyes to heaven, he could see it, he could speak it, and he could walk through all that without having to go through. You know, God doesn't put you through, uh, I, I got to save this, but I'll just say this. He doesn't put you, this, just let's see how much a man can take. No, that's on you. That, then thou shall have good success. You're the one that does it. Quit thinking about the negative. Quit thinking about things, uh, being afraid. Start thinking about the promises of God and how every promise is yea and amen. Meditate on the promise. It's then see it and then let 
the, your imagine, imagine yourself with the victory in there and then speak it, expect it, and you'll see it with your natural eyes. But first you got to see it with the eyes of your spirit. Hallelujah. So he couldn't see it resulting in Satan robbing Job of everything that he had. How about blind Bartimaeus? Physically blind, yet saw his healing. He threw, as soon as Jesus called him, he threw away his beggar's coat. He saw himself healed in seeing, and it was delivered to him. He was miraculously healed. Glory to God. Mark 5, 25 through 29 in the Amplified. And there was a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years and who had endured much suffering under the hands of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but instead grew worse. She had heard the reports concerning Jesus. She made a good decision. She chose the good report, not the evil report of the doctors. And she came up behind him in the throng and touched his garment. For she kept saying, if I only touch his garments, I shall be restored to health. In verse, and immediately her flow of blood was dried up at the source. And suddenly she felt in her body that she was healed of her distressing ailment. Let's go back one screen before. What happened here? For she kept saying. She kept speaking, believing it, and speaking it until it happened. Till she experienced it and walked in it. Glory to God. She kept meditating on and speaking the best, the promises of God. To meditate is to speak to yourself uh, repeatedly. Not speaking the problem, but the answer. That's God kind of meditation. Hallelujah. You cannot enjoy the promises of God and the abundance of God without first destroying the ungodly images that have been built into your subconscious through the world system. And the subconscious mind was designed by God to keep us in line with what we believe. See, the devil just twists what God, good thing God gave us. He gave us the subconscious mind to keep us in line with what we believe. But if you believe in lies, it'll work for that. What's outside of you is a product of what's inside of you. If you have fear inside and you speak it, that you're going to frame your world. God framed his world with his words and you frame your world with your words. Matthew 12, 34 through 35. Buck up. I'm getting close to the end. Hallelujah. Oh, generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. In verse 35, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. It can't be more plain than that. An inner lack will never produce an outer manifestation of abundance. An inner sickness will never produce an outward manifestation of a healing. But if you get the healing on the inside in your heart and you believe it and speak it, it will manifest outwardly. Hallelujah. Think about or hear the woman's continuous confection, uh, confession of her future. If I may just touch his clothes, I shall be whole. She kept speaking it and then when she touched there wasn't anything to, but for her to be made whole she was destroying 
the grow worse image that had been put inside of her by all the doctors and she was creating a new reality. And that's the power that we have inside of us. We create a new reality. The world says, oh, this is reality. Well, reject that, hallelujah. I reject that we're gonna lose our freedoms in the United States of America. And I say, I won't allow it, hallelujah. God could use one man. Even if I was the only one, I believe we would have our freedoms. I welcome you to join with me, hallelujah. And I don't mind sharing the rewards, hallelujah, glory to God. So she was destroying the grow worse image that was inside. And God has commanded his people to meditate on his word throughout history because it's a spiritual law. And it, that means it works the same every single time. It's how the kingdom operates in the earth. Here's some more examples. Abraham meditated on the stars that God showed him, Genesis 15, 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. See those stars? That's how many children you're gonna have. Oh, wow, I think I can believe for this thing now. Wow, he wanted him to have a picture that brings forth faith. God wants you to have a word picture. Lift up your eyes. When you meditate on the word of God, your imagination kicks in and you get a picture of what God is going to do. And then you lay hold of it and you don't let go and you keep speaking it until you get it. Hallelujah. King David meditated God's word. This is uh, Psalm 119 verse 148. My eyes anticipate the night watches, and I am awake before the cry of the watchman, that I may meditate on your word. Hallelujah. This has been throughout history. This is what God desires for us to do. Praise the Lord. Psalm 77, 6 in the Amplified. I call to remembrance my song in the night with my heart. I meditate and my spirit searches diligently. Your spirit starts to search when you're meditating on the word of God. What is this? How does this work? What's the principle involved here? If I did this, would it work for me? How do I generate this into my life? And the spirit starts searching and the Holy Spirit starts uh, supplying the answers to those things. Hallelujah. When we meditate, our spirit searches diligently for guidance, answers, or making new discoveries in God's Word. Hallelujah. Have you noticed that? And let's look uh, some more at David. Psalm 77, 12 in the Amplified. I will meditate also upon your works and consider all your mighty deeds. Then you start to remember all, everything that God did for you. The King James says, and talk of thy doings. So you meditate on all what God has done, and then you start talking about what God has done. And then you say, and he's no respecter of persons in the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he did it for me, or he did, did it for this person or that person, he'll do it for me. Hallelujah. And then you start to see yourself walking in it. Whenever the scriptures read, I will, it means you have a decision to make. You make that decision just like David did. Hallelujah. The choice is yours. It's not God's. You choose. He's already made his decision. I'm bringing you in as one of my family. I'm adopting you. And I'll treat you like my own child. And I've given you a full inheritance. Now, and here's how you get it and walk in it. But then you have to choose to do so. And whatever God has done, it's always for whosoever will. So if you make no change in how much you meditate, guess what? Nothing's going to change. But if you decide, I'm going to meditate more on the Word of God, things are going to start popping in your life. Biblical meditation is designed to renew your mind 
and expand your capacity to receive the promises of God. It's a way to transform your thinking so you can think on a higher level the frequency of God. Hallelujah. Remember, if something is too big for your mind, it will be too big for your hand. But if it's not too big for your mind, if you can see it, then your hands will then be big enough to hold on to and work with it. Hallelujah. And this is how God decides how much you can handle. Is how much, how can, ha, have you seen it? Do you believe it? Do you imagine yourself walking in that victory and believing it and continually saying it? And then when you do that, it will release it from the unseen spiritual world into this natural world that you can lay hold of it. And you will be equipped and ready to hold on and operate in it. Praise the Lord. That's how the kingdom of God works. And meditation on the word of God is very important part of it. And it's time for God's people to walk in it and just quit giving it up and say, oh, that's what the devil does. The devil only does it because that's what God does. Amen. God makes people uh, whole and healthy. The devil makes people sick. He just does the opposite of what he uses, what God has created and then twists it. God created um, sex in marriage. It's a beautiful thing. So what does the devil do? He uses that and twists it to destroy families. So don't let the devil steal meditation and imagination from you. They were given to you by God to bless you, to advance the kingdom, and to make things on earth as they are in heaven. Hallelujah. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it.